Hello, my name is Job Wise Jones. I want to tell you thank you for coming in today to this interview for company XYZ. To the right of me is Marty, to the left of me is Michael. What they're going to do, they're going to take notes during this interview. So I don't want you to be alarmed by that. It's just part of the process. Number two, I want to tell you before we start the interview is that we're not here to ask you difficult questions or questions that will make you freeze up. We are really here to get a really good grip on what kind of fit you would be for our company, okay? So now without further ado, let's get on with the interview. So tell me about yourself, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, walk me through your resume. Yeah, let's review your resume, uh-huh. Okay, all right. How did you hear about this position? Where? Okay, got, I understand. Okay. Uh, why do you want to work for this company? Uh huh. Okay. Oh, well, but why do you want this job, this specific job? Why, why is that? Okay. So tell me, why should we hire you instead of uh, everybody else? Why, why should we hire you? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, thank you. Tell me, what's one of your greatest strengths? Uh -huh. And tell me one of your greatest weaknesses. Weaknesses, yes. Uh -huh. Tell me about one of your most professional achievements you, you've done. Yes. Uh, one of the biggest, excuse me, professional achievements you've ever had. Uh-huh. Right? So tell me about a conflict or challenge you have faced at work. Last year? Okay. Okay. Tell me about a time you've shown, you have shown leadership skills. Uh -huh. Okay. Tell me about a time where you disagree with a direction or uh, a, a, a uh, with, with a supervisor or a manager, tell me about that time and tell me what happened. Uh huh. Okay. Can you tell me about a time where you made a mistake? Yes. Okay. And tell me about a time that you have failed. Failed, yes. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions for us? Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, guys, my name is Job Wise Jones. I have done this for many, many years, done interviewing all across the spectrum for many jobs. Before we go on, do ask that you please subscribe to my channel. I'm a very small channel. This is what I do. I pay my skills forward to you guys, okay? Please hit the like comment as well. I would really appreciate it. So let's get right down to it. Tell me about yourself. <clears throat> you know, you guys, people still have a hard time with those questions. And it's okay, but I'm telling you why. Because they're not practicing. Or number two, they're... When I say tell you about yourself, right? They say tell me about yourself. They don't care about your hobbies. You like to go hiking or, or I like to fly planes or uh, my girlfriend is so cute, my boyfriend is so cute. That doesn't matter. When they say tell me about yourself, you want to tell them about who you are that pertains to the job. Let's give you an example. So job-wise, tell me about yourself. Why do you want to... Um, Work in our water plant. Well, you know, since I was a kid, I loved, I loved getting water delivered to our house. We used to always get the water delivered to our house, right? And I talked to the delivery guy, really nice guy, you know, it's really fun. He used to give me free water sometimes, you know. And one time I got to visit a water plant. That was it. I was stuck. I said, this is why I want to become one of your engineers here for your water plant. I have always love being involved with water, making it appear where it comes from, how to improve it, and everything like that, you know. I love that whole idea. So, you guys, that's how you answer it. You're tying into your, tell me about yourself and to the job. Now, this is this is all, this wasn't rehearsed. I just did it, uh, you know, off the fly of my head. But if you see, I'm directing it all towards the job that they're offering, right? It's a, say it's a water engineering job, whatever, you know, well, water plant job, whatever, right? I put all my focus, my past, my history into the present, saying this is what I've always done. This is what I want to do, okay? Walk me through your resume. This is really not, it's, it's, guys, really, it's a trick question because they want to know. It's really, it's a trick knowledge qu 
question. Because many people get their resumes done professionally. They're even using chat GPT sometimes, right? Sometimes a professional or chat GPT will put down your resume at wrong dates and wrong times. The folks just want to know, do you know what your resume looks like? And do you know what your experience is and what dates you were there and what jobs you had at those times? It's really like a trick knowledge question. The easy answer here, know your resume. That's all you got to do. How did you hear about this position? Okay, sure. I have always wanted to be a bee maker. I've always wanted to join any kind of bee making company. Your company is the only one out there I know that makes bees. You know, the stuffed animal bees that you guys make. I've always wanted to make stuffed animals in the shape of bees. I, I love that. So how do I hear about it? I've always had my phone attuned to any kind of job openings your company has had for bee making because I love making stuffed bees. Okay, guys, it's silly, of course, right? What I just said, right? But you're saying, though, you've always been watching their company for openings. Why? Because they make stuffed bees and you're a bee maker. You're showing an eagerness, right? Let's go back to communication as well. Verbal communication. Verbal communication is only 7% of communication. The rest of 93% is non-communication, correct? What does that mean? It means my hands, my shoulders, my eyes are alight. I'm, I'm alive because I want to make stuffed bees, right? So <laughs> I know it's a silly concept, but I'm just saying though is that I really am pushing for that job because I'm always paying attention to when you guys have job openings, okay? Why do you want this job? Almost the same way, you know? Why do you want this job? Because I really think I'm one of the best stuff bee makers out there. I make the excellent details from their eyes to their wings to their stingers, you know? I make all that detail, yellow and black and the awesome colors, you know? I want this job because I know I'm the best fit for this job. So there we go, right? You're answering with some confidence. You're smiling, though, too. You talk about the colors, how it, it makes you happy. You guys, this is what they're looking for, you know? In any job you answer, when they say, why do you want this job? I don't care if it's a doctor, a truck driver, it's a whatever, medical assistant, whatever. When they say, why do you want this job? It is your chance to express yourself and at the end of it, to brag a little bit. This is why I know I will be a good fit for your company. You see, you're really getting into the answers. Do not be a drone at your interview, guys. I keep saying this because... I see drones week in and week out. Yeah. I'd be a good bee maker because I like bees and bees go buzz, buzz, buzz. No, no, guys. You understand? You want to really get into these answers, right? Why should we hire you? Same reason. As, as it's, almost, uh, it's almost a redundant question, right? Hire you, want the job. It's almost the same thing. What can you bring to this company? I bring integrity. I bring a sense of really strong, tenacious behavior. I like to work with people. I'm an awesome team player, but I'm also, if you need me to, to work alone, I can do that too. I bring joy, I bring happiness, I bring good feelings to this job. This is why I want to work here because I bring what I believe you want as employees for this job. You see, again, you're, 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 you're joyous, you know, you're happy, you know, you're not, you're not overboard, right? But you're happy, you know, you're happy for this opportunity, you're happy for the interview. Guys, here's the same thing I'll tell you. At the interviews I, I've been on for years now, even firefighters, police, nurses, whatever, people, interview boards are really looking for more energy and more enthusiasm. They want to know that you're interested in working for them. They really want to know this, you know? So be enthusiastic. Don't sit there like a log. They, they don't want to deal with that anymore. Those days are gone. They're old, okay? What's your greatest strength? I don't know that answer. Bring up your greatest strength, but make, sure, make it attached to your personality. Don't bring up some nonsense like I, I make good food or I ski. No, no. Strength is like the biggest one I want to hear today, any interview panel wants to hear, is integrity. I'm a very honest person. I'm a very trusting person. I really believe that honesty is the best policy, stuff like that. You want to be a very honest person anyway, right? But you want to express that at the interview, okay? What's your greatest weakness? Always turn the weakness into a strength. So what do I mean by that? Well, you know, as a nurse, I know I work 9 to 5, and I, they hate when I do overtime, but sometimes about 4.45, I start talking to a patient, and, you know, we're talking, I'm happy, We're because I'm learning about my patients, you know, and... I look at the clock, it's 5.15. Uh-oh, you know, I'm 15 minutes overtime. But I love talking to my patients. So, yeah, you're going to get some policy of overtime. Oh, my gosh.
but what's the benefit? You're talking to patients. So that's a really, really big deal. That's how you turn a weakness into a strength. What's your greatest professional achievement? Whatever it is, make it awesome. Tell them what it is. Keep it under a minute. That's all you got to do. Tell me about a challenge or conflict you faced at work and how did you deal with it? It's like a script, guys. It's really easy. Here's what I want to tell you. It's like a three or four answers, okay? Whenever I have a challenge at work, say with a colleague, I always find somewhere private, you know, and I pull them aside. I ask them, can we talk behind this door here for a minute? If they're agreeable to that, then we go behind the door and I tell them what happened or how I feel in a very smooth, calm, tone voice, non-aggressive at all. Just tell them how I feel about a situation. And then after two minutes, I stop and I ask them how they feel about that. And they talk for two minutes and we go back and forth and have a nice cordial conversation. Now, at the end of the conversation, if they don't agree with me or they feel more hostile, they feel irritable by me, then at that point I will ask us, can we just stop the conversation? And number three, I would ask for a supervisor to come in and mediate between the two of us to find some kind of solution. Because at the end of the day, I had to work with these people for 40 hours a week and they're my part of my work family. And I wanna get along with all my work family members. So this is important to me. This is why I would pull my colleague aside and have this conversation. So you say you're showing concern, care, for sure, right? This is all real stuff, you know? You pull them aside first, one-on-one, -on -one -on -one, don't broadcast for everybody else. That starts rumors and drama. Number two, you, you're calm, you know, you like this, you know, you talk to them, whatever, tell them how you feel, whatever, for two, two minutes. Don't drone off for an hour. Nobody wants to hear that crap. Talk to them for two minutes. They talk two minutes. If you can't still get a resolution, bring in some management people in there to have a nice talk with both of you guys there to figure out the solution to your problem. How have you demonstrated leadership skills? Kind of a trick question. Many of us have leadership skills already, but here's the answer to this question. Whatever skill set you talk about, Remember, I want you to wrap it up, right? So I'll talk my head. Okay, how do you handle leadership? Uh, what, what? Uh, see, how do you um, demonstrate leadership skills? When I come to work, I'm always trying to be a part of the team. You know, if I see one of my colleagues not really there, maybe he or she's having a hard day, I'll go to them and say, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, if they want to talk to me, I'll listen to them because I want them to feel better. And then at the end of our conversation, I'll give them a high five and say, "Hey, you know what?" I'm with you. I'm here with you. And then I want to make sure they're happy. We work together to get these through these problems that they're having, you know, because we're part of a team. And every day they come in, I'll say, hey, how you doing? You know, how you doing? And as they get better, I'll ask less and less because people don't want that, you know, always on them. How you doing? But I want to make sure my colleague, my, my, my family member at work is okay. So that's what I do. I show leadership by making sure I'm there for my fellow worker. Again, you see... The non-communication, again, is my shoulders are steady now. They're not all crazy. They're steady. My voice has come down, right? My hands are like this now because I'm telling the interviewer, uh, interviewee panel that this is a serious situation and I want to show some, sincer some, sin some sincerity when I talk to my fellow colleague. But I want the leadership, the, the, in the interview panel to know that I'm serious about trying to take care of my fellow worker, okay? Again, the voice comes down, the body stops, you know, not so exaggerated anymore. It's a serious question. So to have a serious answer, I've got to take you serious. If you're all jitting around and, and do this kind of crap, well, no one's going to know, you know, okay, well, whatever. You've got to match your tonality and your body language to the questions that you get. Understand? People miss that all the time in interviews. They use the wrong energies for the right questions. And it's just crazy to me sometimes. Pay attention to the question. If it's a light question, answer it lightly. A heavy question, tone yourself down, put in the heavy, heavier eye contact, hands across, you answer the question. Okay, guys? There we go. About the time you disagree with a decision that was made at work. So sometimes your boss will give you a decision you don't like, you don't think it's right. What I would do, I would talk, I would ask my boss, yeah, 15 minutes, talk to me a half hour, whatever. The boss would say yes, then I would go talk to him and tell him respectfully what I think about the decision and why it is. Now, at the same time, I'll tell my boss, well, I know you have final say, ma'am, but this is what I, I think we should be doing, and that's it. So what you're doing, if they say, if the boss says, you're saying to them, yeah, okay, the boss has final say, of course, because there's a boss, right? But you're showing the panel that you're not, again, you're not, you're not a drone. If you think something's wrong, you'll respectfully go to the boss and say, well, maybe we can look at it this way instead, okay? If they still say no to you, it's fine. But you're speaking up. 
businesses do not want drones. They want people who can fake. Okay, so that's a big one for you when you answer that question. Tell me about a time you made a mistake. I don't care what the mistake is. Uh, who cares about that? Here's the deal with that question. It's not the mistake you made. The answer is how you recovered from that mistake. Example, right? Well, one time I told this patient, because I'm a nurse, the wrong medication. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. So what I did, I called him as fast as I can. I told him, please, no, 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 don't do this medication, do this medication. And then when they got back from the pharmacy, I made them read to me on, over the phone what the medication was, how much you're supposed to take. I made sure the doctor knew exactly what they were taking now, the new medication they're supposed to be on. Everything was on par, and then we were fine. So there we go. The mistake was the medication. We get that. Okay, fantastic. But the interview panel is looking for how you recover. It doesn't matter what example you use, guys. It doesn't matter what example you use. Always put recovery into the answer. How did you recover from that boo-boo, right? That, there you go. Time that, that you failed. <laughs> That's easy, you know? Tell them the same thing again. But every time, if you fail or make a mistake, it's not the failing, it's not the mistake. We all know you're human like we are on the panel. But what the question really is asking you, how did you recover from the mistake or the failure, failure that, we, that you made, right? And if you stay there and say, oh, gee, a mistake, a, a, hmm, a failure, hmm, you don't want to be that person. You want to be prepared for this interview. Now, every question I give you here from my list of the most popular questions I get all the time in interviews, it doesn't mean they're going to be on your interview board, but it does mean this. If you're practicing with me and you watch this video three or four times, whatever, it's going to help you prepare for the unknown, right? Because some questions here you might not be ready for, but they might come across on, on the interview, okay? Last question always is, do you have any questions for us? Yes, every job wise Jones already knows the answer to this question. We always have questions for you. Why? Because our interviews are one-way street or two-way street. They are a two-way street. They're interviewing you and you're interviewing them as well. You understand that, guys? Don't say, oh, I got to go for an interview on Wednesday. They're going to interview me. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're going to interview you and... You are going to interview them, okay? Don't give up your power of who you are. You know, you're offering a service. They're offering pay, right? If you're this awesome worker, you better be interviewing them because your skill set is awesome. It's a great, even if you're a beginner worker, first job you ever had, just your enthusiasm, your newness is awesome to have in an environment. It's contagious to see somebody who is happy all the time, and it's, that's awesome people you want in the environment, all right? Do not sell yourself short. They're just not interviewing you. You are going to interview them as well, okay? Don't give them all the power. That's ridiculous, okay? Do not give them all the power, all right? So, you guys, at this point here, please subscribe to my channel. Please comment down below about your best interview you've ever had. I want to hear that, okay? Also, if you have a personal request for me, jobwisejones at gmail.com. I'll make a video out of your question. And as always, please subscribe. Do not be part of the 88% just look around and go away. No, subscribe and help grow this little tiny itty bitty channel. I would really appreciate it. You guys have a good day and take care. Bye-bye.